Hi, I'm Doug Ashford. There are no grand celebrations here, no speeches, no bright lights. Somehow, we've come to believe that greatness is reserved for the chosen few, for the superstars. The truth is that greatness is for all of us. This is not about lowering expectations. It's about raising them for every last one of us, because greatness is not in one special place, and it is not in one special person. Greatness is wherever somebody is trying to find it. The theory of evolution claims that only the strong self shall survive. Maybe so, maybe so. But the theory of competition says, just because they're the strong doesn't mean they can't get their butt kicked. That's right. See, what every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. The odds may be stacked against you. Fair enough. But what the odds don't know is this isn't a math test. It's a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a way of trumping logic. I broke the computer. <laughs> I was doing that. Sooner or later, you start taking yourself seriously. You know when you need a break. You know when you need a rest. You know what it is to get worked up about it and what it is to get rid of. You know when it's time to take care of yourself for yourself, to do something that makes you stronger, faster, more complete because you know it's never too late to have a life and never too late to change one. I am more prone to be inquisitive, to promote discussion. I want to find out what your thinking was. I want to find out what your feelings are. And did you learn anything? Maybe it's my own fault. Maybe I let you believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner, that my work was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see the failures gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I let you believe that this work was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Or maybe you're just making excuses. Anyway, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. But then comes that unavoidable time when you say to anyone who will listen, what the heck am I doing anyway? If it's a person you love, first you hate only their foulest inadequacies, then you start hating their good points as well. I can't believe I ever said I felt this way. I must have been dreaming. Wait, this is no dream. This is a film noir movie, and one of those really dark ones, too. I mean, this is love. If they didn't tell you before, we will tell you now. Love is a game, and if you play, you either win, lose, or get ejected before the game is over. There are no ties. Maybe you'll lose and learn some great, meaningful answer from it all, like, if it looks too good to be true, it is. It's harder to love something when you don't have to work at it. It's harder when it asks something of you. You just might be afraid to give. Give it anyway. The heart is the most resilient muscle. It is also the stupidest. If this love you found is good to you, hold it. Keep it. Shout about it. If it isn't, then maybe you should just become very good friends. There is something to be gained from commitment. There are rewards for staying when you would rather leave. And there is something to be said for running, 
running up that hill when you would rather slide down it. And so you let love come perch on your shoulder. You do not turn it away. Just do it. Nike.